Hey everybody, Bill Faith here from Limo University. Hope you guys are doing well on this Monday morning. Um, today I want to talk, there's a lot of things that have happened uh, over the weekend and today Congress is back in session. Uh, hopefully that means they're going to make some amendments, add a few more hundreds of billions of dollars to the PPP program for those of you that have not been able to get funded yet. Um, so the thing that I like the most is that it's very apparent that uh, things are going to start to open up across the country. Uh, we've had some beaches open up in Florida already. Uh, vacation areas are planning on opening. Um, my state's looking at, at opening next month, Alabama. There's a lot of things that are happening and hopefully we'll start getting some wheels in motion. Uh, this becomes really important for all of us that we start planning and preparing uh, for really what our future looks like, and most importantly, uh, over the next 45 to 60 days, maybe even 90 days, uh, to make sure that we're prepared. And there's a lot of things that we need to do. I'm just making sure that this is broadcasting live because I'm having issues with my internet here, um, and it looks like it is. Um, so some things that become really important is that we take everything incrementally. I don't believe that all of us can make, you know, these huge, tremendous changes in our business, you know, overnight. So we need to take it day by day, week by week. So this is going to be the first in a weekly series. This is a program that I put together for BillFaith.com. Um, and I delivered in a boot camp uh, two weeks ago. And I'm going to kind of break it down for you and walk you through it on a week by week basis. And as you can see here behind me, the first thing that you need to think about in week number one, and we're really just going to strategize. That's all that it is. I don't want you to work on executing much in week number one, but writing down your goals, writing down your goals and determining what is your outcome when you come back and you're working again and your business is starting to get back to some normalcy, what is the outcome that you desire? And I got to imagine that a lot of you, like myself, are going to have a different desired outcome when we come out of shelter in place, when we get past coronavirus than what we had previously. And a lot of you probably are going to want more. I want more. I'm going to set my goals higher. <clears throat> Is that, does that mean that we'll achieve those in the first three, four or five weeks? Most likely it's not because it's going to be a difficult time. But this is why we need to create our roadmap of how we're going to get to become more profitable, of how we're going to become more profitable to where we can spend more time with our family. So the first thing that I need you to do is really figure out what your desired outcome is going to be. What's going to be different? If you weren't happy with your business prior to this happening uh, last month, then we need to change the narrative. We need to change the outcome. And right now is the time to do it. So write down your goals and write down your desired outcome. And what I believe in is that I want to look at the outcome. Okay. So I, I was a, a $500,000 a year company making $75,000 a year. And I didn't have enough cash. You know, if I didn't get the PPP, I didn't get the EID, I was at risk of going out of business or depleting my savings, whatever that is. Well, I want to change that. I want to have a more positive outcome in the future. So I'm literally going to write my goals down to where if I was a $500,000 a year company, and if you guys know me, I'm not really focused on the revenue part here. What I'm looking at is the $75,000 that you or I were making in this fictitious business. Let me adjust this here real quick so my head doesn't get cut off. <clears throat> so what I'm focusing on is this right here, that $75,000. So I'm gonna say, you know what? I need to make $100,000 in year one. And then my goal is gonna be, I wanna make $125,000 in year number two. So that's my desired outcome. May sound outlandish, may sound ridiculous in the times that we're in right now, but as we reboot, I believe that we can take measures to be able to achieve those goals. So you notice I don't really want to focus on the revenue side. And I think a lot of us in our industry focus way too much on revenue. We focus way too much on fleet size. And we're not focusing on what should be the most important to us. And that's the profit and the money that we're able to take home, that we can invest into our children. We can invest into our retirement. We can invest into our future. So 
reshape that outcome. For some of you, it may be, you know what? Hey, I don't mind making a little bit less money, but I want more time. I want to diversify. I want to start another business. I've heard you talk about, Bill, that you need to have three, four different revenue streams, no matter how small. I want to spend more time with my family. I'm getting up there in age. I'm thinking about retirement. Whatever it is, I want to travel more. Just make sure that we write down our desired outcome and our goals that we want to achieve coming out of this. And this could be even more short term. It could be that I'm going to go in and I'm going to actually over the next 45 days, I'm planning on probably rebooting and relaunching. We're going to get into reboot next. And that's what I'm going to write that down because this is exactly the opportunity that you have right now. Number two is reboot. So you have the opportunity to shape your business today. You have the opportunity to be able to change it. So if you look at your goals, you look at your outcome, and it may just be that, good morning, um, it may just be that you want to go in and reshape your client base. Say that you, I mean, there's so many companies that have been so heavily leveraged on the affiliate side of the business, and I'm not talking like 20, 30%, I'm talking 70, 80, 90%, or I was just retail and I want to get into corporate so I can have business on you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, or I was just corporate and my margins weren't big enough and I want to get into the wedding business because I've identified during this downtime where I can stop, I can breathe, I can do some research that there's a large marketplace in my community, in my, in my city for that. This is where we have the opportunity. And this is what I think is the best thing, some of the pros that have come out of this. There's not many, believe me, but is that we can sit back, we can take a breath, and we really should be looking at our business models and rebooting. Every one of us should come out of this with something better about our business. We should definitely all be leaner. If, there, if there's anything that we should learn, and hopefully as we reboot, that we stay lean. And I don't mean just stay lean for two or three months to make up for, you know, the slow matriculation of business coming back. And I'm not just talking about our business and ground transportation, man. This is going to happen with restaurants. It's going to happen with hotels. It's going to happen with bars. It's going to happen with landscaping. How many of you guys have used to have a garden, but you've turned it off? I mean, it's going to affect them as well. It's not just the ground transportation industry, but we all have the ability to reboot. Something that I think is absolutely critical in the reboot phase right now is that you are thinking strategically is how am I going to operate my business differently? How's that going to be different on February 1st and May 1st? Two months, really three, you got February, well, February is a, a bad example. March 1st to May 1st, you have March and April. What did I do differently in January in February, in October of 2019 that I'm not going to do in May, that I'm not going to do in June, that I'm not going to do in July. What did we learn through these things? I'm going to tell you one thing that I've learned is I have yet, I have not been able to qualify for unemployment. Um, I have, I have not been able to, well, I shouldn't say that. I probably could have, but I didn't apply for the PPP for my salary. I probably should have. Um, but one of the things that I'm looking at is every one of my businesses has been an LLC and I've been using a K1 <clears throat> um, to where, and I've never paid myself on payroll. And my wife is a business partner with me in the majority of our LLCs. And one of the things that I'm going to do like within Limo University and about marketing, and she handles our back office. But we just take a distribution evenly. Well, it's a very easy change. So I'm going to lower her percentage of equity inside the company. I've already started to make these changes and I'm going to put her on salary and I'm going to W2 her. And, you know, just in case something like this happens, just in case we have to go through a reboot of this, hopefully we don't in the fall or next year, as Dr. Fauci has talked about. So I'm looking at some things that, that I've learned going through this experience that I didn't learn in 2008 or I didn't have to go through in, you know, the 9-11 uh, crisis. So how are we going to reboot? And this is something I think that becomes really crucial that we take some time and we map out how we're going to reboot. Because we could be talking about financially. Are you going to raise your prices? If you did not have enough retained earnings to make it through this without funding from the PPP or the EIDL, then you probably didn't have enough retained earnings because we're only like six weeks in. And here's the thing that I look at with this is if we had six months of reserves and we're typically when we talk about reserves, we say that we should operate. Um, we need to budget that with no capital, right? With no revenue coming in, but most people don't. And that's part of the, the issue. 
So as you reboot, part of your strategy is how are you going to build up to those six months of reserves? And if you've listened to what I talk about is that I believe if you make a dollar, you need to pay your company 25 cents and you need to take 75 cents off your EBITDA or your net income, whatever you want to call it, your cash flow, um, your net profit. Uh, until you get to that threshold, until you get to that point where you have that six months of net operating costs. And the problem is, is a lot of us, a lot of businesses, I mean, we look at some of these majors like Neiman Marcus is probably going to file bankruptcy this week. They didn't have enough cash. This isn't just a problem for small business owners uh, like ourselves. This is a problem for major businesses as well. So we need to look at everything in the reboot. Financially, how are we going to save differently in the future? How are we going to treat our business? Are we going to treat our business as a legitimate business partner? Or are we just siphoning all of the cash out of our business to take it personally? Um, you know, hopefully we're going to be a little bit more prudent in how we manage that cash. Are we going to look at our finances differently? If you've been managing your business out of your checkbook, are you going to make any changes? Have you been going to YouTube or to QuickBooks? Have you been studying any of the, the different information that's out there to pick up, you know, different financial skill sets? Um, that's something that can become extremely important. Are you going to do some different debt allocation within your vehicles, your structure of your company? Are you going to go after different verticals? I think raising prices is something that is critical because the majority of you are going to increase your costs just from the new safety uh, sanitation components that you're putting into place moving forward. Which leads me to a post that <clears throat> um, Jose Luna posted in Limo Growth this morning. And I've seen a lot of conversations about um, and, you know, like about dividers. You know, a lot of people think, well, it's it doesn't look good. It doesn't exude luxury. It makes us look like a taxi. Well, you know what? Your thought process of what you believed your your company is or was eight months ago, in my opinion, is irrelevant. If you want to stay in business, if you want to flourish, you have got you have got to communicate with your customers. Because they're the ones that are going to determine this. So here's number three. Call your clients. You've got to be having dialogue with your clients and what their expectations are coming out of this. Because your clients are going to determine the valuation of your business moving forward. And those of you that say you are not going to put dividers in your car, you're thinking small. You're, you're being naive, in my opinion. You're not, you don't understand that your clients are the ones that are going to determine whether they're going to use you or not. You need to have the dialogue with them and ask them what their standards are going to be. But you need to have your plan in place. You need to have your strategy in place of what you're going to do. So I look at the, I think it's the LGE or whatever it is, the, the little plastic clip-ons that are, that are going in. I think Doug Schwartz and a couple of other people posted some pictures over the last week. Um, you know, from these. And for me, I'm a huge advocate of those. I'm a huge advocate because I'm the one that's going to, if I use car service over the next few months, if you don't have that, I'm not using you. I don't care if I've used you in the past. I don't care about the loyalty at that point. What I care about is this. This is the only thing that your customers and you should care about. And that's the outcome. I feel that that sneeze guard, that protector, that partition, whatever it is, it's the same thing as the grocery stores that have put up today. It's the same thing as a sneeze guard over a salad bar. Are they effective? I don't know. Has the CDC tested them? I don't know. But I know that I will feel more comfortable knowing that somebody can, the chauffeur, if he sneezes, that, you know, I've got some protection here or that if I cough or if I sneeze, I'm not going to get them infected because you know, I could be asymptomatic. We don't know these things. So trying to get over the fear of unknown. And most importantly, the goal of speaking to your customers, the goal of talking to them is to create this <clears throat> comfort. That's it. Comfort that you know what they want by having open dialogue and talking to them and listening to them and asking questions. You know, are they, if, if you have big corporate clients, are they making changes? If they're making changes to their travel policy, they're doing it now. They're not gonna wait until the, you know, President Trump says the country's all open. We're, we're ready to go. Okay, let's start working on it now. They're prepping now and this is what I'm trying to urge you guys to do. 
So call your clients and understand that you're trying to create comfort for them. You're the only way that you can make them comfortable is to do the things that they want. They're going to dictate the new normal. And I believe that those partitions that are even just the plastic ones that you snap in, I'm not talking about the huge $700, $800 ones that you suck in with the wood grain and all that type of stuff. And that makes the back cabin way too small and yada, yada, yada. What I'm talking about is providing solutions to people's problems and people's problems are right up here. So those things install in a couple of minutes. That's literally something that you could keep in the trunk. You could say, do you want this or do you not want this? Here's a safety option that we have. Some people like them, some people don't. These vehicles have them, these vehicles don't, whatever it is, give options to your customers, but most importantly, call them and have dialogue. There's some, uh, some poignant things that you should be discussing with your customers. And number three should be every week, you should be calling your customers. If you have 1,233 customers inside of your limo, anywhere, livery coach, Santa Cruz, whatever software you have, or if you have 10,000, if you have 10,000 or if you have 100,000, whether it's just you as the solopreneur or you're a $40 million company, you guys should be calling your customers every single day, every day. And if you're the owner and you're sitting at home not doing anything, then you're not setting yourself up to be successful when we come out of this. That's why I need you to take action every single day. This is the first day. So I've given you three things, three to do this week. That's it. Set your goals. Understand what your desired outcome it is. And as we get into number two, this is a, an opportunity for a reboot. You can change that. The one thing that I want you to understand is what you see everybody, and I'm one of the people that are on those stages at Chauffeur Driven, at LCT, at all of these shows. You do not have to do it the way that other operators do it. You don't. They share best practices based on what works for them. You don't have to follow in the affiliate game or the hotel game or you know the wedding game, whatever it is. You get to choose your client base. You get to choose your client base based on who you want in that outcome, who you target, and how you position for them. That's why this reboot is so important. If you weren't 100% happy with your business before, now is the time that you have to change it and improvement. Now is that time. Um, I see a lot of people commenting over here. And if you can click that link in StreamYard so I can see your name, that would be awesome. Because uh, I don't know who is uh, commenting. I have to look down at my phone, which is a little bit distracting. I apologize. Turn the sound off here, and it's then I don't get it in real time. So somebody asked, uh, call and say what, though? Um, don't know who that is, but that's a great question. Call and say what? Number one is, hey, Bob, this is Bill from, from Bill's Limousine. I hope you're doing well. You're holding up through all of this. How's business? What, what's kind of what's your guys' status? And, you know, hey, we're just like you, Bill. You know, we're hunkered down. We are working. We're working remotely from home. Um, you know, you probably are, are calling about travel. I said, no, I'm not calling about, you know, future travel at all. What I'm calling about is just to say hi and see how your needs are potentially changing, if you're going to make any changes to your travel program in the future. And probably most importantly, just to see, is there anything I can do for you? And have the dialogue and say, you know what, are your... If you have a travel manager, you might be talking to an EA, you might be talking to a business owner. This is what I've talked about, about just calling to help and calling to have an open dialogue. You're not selling anything, that's for, for certain. You know, it's, it's, if, you, if you're not comfortable calling, then you need to do something like this, you know, to reach your clients. But doing nothing, just staying in the background and not having dialogue with them is the worst thing that you can do. I believe that the number one thing that you should be doing is you should be offering help. If you, so what will, I don't know what that means, Chris. So what will, <clears throat> um, is that you should be offering help to your customers and out and literally if you have the ability, like let's just say if some, a lot of you have been funded with the PPP already, but you don't have enough trips to bring chauffeurs back. And look, I get they don't wanna work. I get they're making more money on unemployment, all that type of stuff. But if you are fortunate to have some and you have downtime and you're paying them, and especially if you've got to hit that 75% uh, payroll for the PPP, send them to do free shit, you know, for your customers. I mean, anything that you can figure out to do to help, to change their outcome, to make them comfortable, that's really what you want to talk to them about. So what will be your customer base now since traveling will be limited? Um, you know, I think that, I think air, 
look, Chris, I mean, I've talked about this for three or four weeks. I put out videos for um, city to city travel. I think especially I think you're in New York. I think that whole eastern seaboard specifically, and I think California are probably the two best examples of this. Um, if you're in New York or you're in Newark or you're in Philly, you are right in the middle between Boston and Washington, D.C. If you are not trying to call your customers and ask them if they're going to be flying, and when the, most of them say, no, we're not flying anytime soon, and you're not positioned to offer them to drive them city to city, and you don't have your safety procedures ready and your sanitation ready, look, I don't know about you guys, but if I live in Newark, New Jersey, or if I live in Philadelphia and I got to go to Boston, or if I got to go to the city, or if I got to go to Washington, D.C., I'm not flying. And I don't want to do the Excella either. I want to be in the back of one of your guys' cars if you can communicate to me that it is safer for me. And that's who I think wins, you know, to be honest with you. And the, but the one thing that's different, and when I talk about like increasing your income and your out and all that type of stuff and raising your prices, you can raise your prices, but understand when we're doing stuff like that, we still have to be competitive. So one, you need to know your hard operating costs. And two, you need to set your, your gross profit margin above what your hard operating costs are. But you also got to be flexible with that type of stuff, right? And I never want to be flexible to where I'm not sticking to my profit mar margin integrity, but I, what I don't know right now is that, what does that, how flexible does that profit margin integrity have to be coming out of this? I believe somebody, all I can do is speak for myself, Chris, because I haven't spoken to your customers. And this is where if your customers are tire kickers and they won't, and you say they won't pay for that, then you need to get in your reboot. You need to find different customers that will. But I promise you that instead of spending, you know, a hundred and hundred bucks for a coach ticket on the Excella to get from, you know, Philly to, you know, Penn Station, I'd much rather spend 250 to sit by myself in a sedan. And especially if you have a partition and you show me like the safety videos that Empire gave to the NLA and we gave to the NLA and I see them cleaning and sanitizing because that makes me feel more comfortable. That's what I'm looking for. That's why you should be looking for value-based buyers um, in your reboot if you don't have them. Currently, I also think this will be a very similar scenario between San Francisco and Los Angeles, San Diego, Phoenix, Vegas, you know, kind of all in that quadrant. Much more difficult in middle America, but I promise you there will be people that will be driving from Nashville to Indianapolis to Chicago and Chicago to St. Louis and Atlanta back and forth to Nashville and down to Orlando. It's just the, the heavier concentrated areas like that eastern seaboard between D.C. and Boston. That is the prime opportunity for that type of stuff. I mean, if you're stuck down in, in, you know, Naples, Florida, or Miami, there's probably not a whole lot of places they're going to be able to drive outside of just inside that state, because I don't think people are going to drive 15 hours or 20 hours by any means. But, you know, I mean, I can get to Chicago in six and a half hours from Nashville, you know, versus having to go to the airport an hour early, right? Then taking an hour long flight, then having to go through Midway, right? So for me, that's a three hour process, roughly. I'd much rather spend six and a half to seven hours virtually double that time to be in solitude by myself and to be able to work, do whatever I need to do <clears throat> if I feel that my outcome is going to be safer for me. And I just don't, I'm not one that wants to get on an airplane. So I think the air travel is, even though we all want it to get back to normal, that's something as it's going to be down. And I think that'll be some of the, the things that will come back the latest. Um, you need to be positioned to be able to take advantage of that inside of your reboot. Uh, I think that's a great question, Chris. And, you know, I think very few people have offered city to city transportation as kind of a core service in the past. Um, but I would definitely have that as part of my, of my marketing, my sales mix coming out of uh, the reboot. Uh, the one thing that I think you really have to do is you have to do number three every week. You got to be calling your clients. The other thing that is, is super important now um, is as we come down to number four, and you got to do this at the end of every single week, is you need to review and adapt. And this is kind of what I teach from a marketing standpoint, and then also as we're looking at business model standpoints. And something super important is that we review every single week. Because we are in a different stage right now. You may be on a 45-day runway rate for this plan. You may need to excel that to 30 days or 25 days, or we may 
maybe can extend it out. We need to know what's going on. We need to keep our finger on the pulse of what's happening as cities open, as states open, you know, as travel opens. I look at a lot of things that have been canceled and pushed out that are now coming back into July, and even some events are coming back into June. Not in mass. We're not talking, you know, baseball games opening with fifty-five thousand people by any means. But we just need to see this this flow because we don't know what's going to happen. I thought for sure over the weekend when I saw what happened in Jacksonville, Florida, and hundreds, if not thousands, of people flooded, um, you know, to uh, the beaches when they when they opened them. I thought for sure they would shut them down because the pictures and the videos that I saw in the news and on Facebook and everything that were reported. There was no social distancing uh, that was being practiced, but they didn't, they left them open. So I think there's a lot of things that, you know, are gonna happen that we just don't know. And that's why we've got to continue to just watch every single week on what's evolving and what's changing. Cause that should, that should really impact the speed that you're going for recovery, right? So I've been trying to get you guys to really focus on the offensive side uh, for about two and a half weeks now. And that's really what this is. And just to kind of give you a, a quick evolution is if you can get through this faster than a week, it's Monday, right? So one thing that I think becomes really, really important is that you're going to schedule time on your calendar, on your phone. You need to schedule time to execute this stuff. If you don't put it on your calendar and you don't schedule time to execute, then you're very unlikely to be able to make the time to do it because you're going to be doing whatever. We have to prioritize because look, there is the I'm too busy. The excuse of I'm too busy just doesn't exist right now. You know, even the companies that are still doing in our industry, they're still doing a hundred trips a day. That sounds like ridiculously, like a ridiculous amount of trips for somebody to be doing right now, but they were probably doing 500 trips a day or 600 trips a day, you know, prior to that. So I believe that I don't have time for that doesn't exist today. I don't believe it ever exists because that's really the dog ate my homework excuse from when we were children. It just means that you haven't prioritized. So understand you still have to prioritize today or you'll get caught up with other things. So make it a priority. If you don't put it on your phone, if you don't put it on your calendar, it's probably not gonna happen. It's what I call work time. And that's where I'm going into execution mode. So I look at, you have to plan, then you have to prepare. And those things are different. Right now we're just talking about planning. We're talking about setting goals, writing down what our desired outcomes are, walking through the reboot and documenting what we would change in our business or what we're gonna change moving forward. Then we're going to call our clients every week. That's just something you're going to see. Call your clients every week as we go through this. And I'm going to be here every single Monday morning. I'm going to walk you through this entire this entire program that I sell on BillFaith.com. And I give it to you guys. We're going to walk through it week by week, right? Because I think this is super important. Then on Friday afternoons is what I'm going to review. And I'm going to make some notes of what I'm going to adapt next week. And I'm going to keep this in something like my premiere of Dallas. Thank you, Eric Devlin. I'm going to keep this inside of my notes and I'm going to label it week one, week two, week three, week four. Because I want to, when I go through review and adapt, I want to be able to see what I'm changing and how I'm going to adapt every single week and see what the pace and the flow is going to end up being. <clears throat> so the last thing, and I'm just going to give you a precursor for next week, is going to be the marketing strategy. So next week, one of the, the items that we're going to talk about, we'll never have more than five. Typically, we'll have three to five items a week. So we never have more than than one per day, which means that if you can just give me an hour a day or set a block of two hours today, two hours, maybe one hour tomorrow on Tuesday and two hours on Wednesday, then you're done um, and you get ahead of the game. But we're gonna talk about marketing strategy and we're gonna go through this every week for six weeks. And the thing that becomes really important is that we're building on everything that starts with number one and those are the goals and the outcome. If we don't document our goals and we don't document our outcome that we want, then we can't systematically build up to that. This is kind of what you do in a business plan. This is what you do in a marketing plan and the sales plan. And yes, we'll get to a sales plan. Um, and then we're going to combine the sales and the marketing plans together. Uh, so they are unilaterally and we'll get to deploying, creating and deploying marketing campaigns and all that type of stuff. But right now, this is like the, the first step, you know, in the first week, the most important component is that we get this stuff done because you will never have more time available than you have right now. Uh, Chris, the problem for us will be that hotels and cruise packages during the summer hold a big percentage of our business. So we're looking at a loss. Chris, give me solutions, buddy. That's what I'm talking about right here. See number two, reboot. 
Forget about that part of the business. If it's a problem, go get new customers. Figure out how you're going to position and people that are actually going to need your services over the next six months. I agree with you. I don't see cruises doing shit, you know, probably for the rest of this year. I mean, I sure as heck am not taking a cruise. Um, I don't think they'll be doing anything until the fall, maybe even winter, probably mostly into 2021. So if that's a huge part of your business in Miami and Los Angeles, um, you know, in New York, in Baltimore, any place that has ports, uh, Seattle, Vancouver, British Columbia, Alaska, whatever it is, that's where we've got to reboot. That's where we've got to pivot. So something that I think is really important for you guys is this. One, it's the reboot that we're talking about. But we have got to pivot instead of panic. You have to pivot instead of panic. I believe that every one of your businesses is going to be different coming out of this. Every one of your businesses has got to be different. The status quo is not going to be the same. It's not going to. It's not going to work as well as it did four or five months ago, and that's because of your customer base. And I talked about this on my office hours last week. I had Chris. If you know Chris, that works uh, with me. We we're sitting right here, and Chris is not taking. It. I've not had him take a pay cut yet. Um, I've kept him at full full salary because he is so integral and so pivotal uh, for my businesses. He's involved in, in four of them with me. Um, not just Lemo University, not just inbound marketing agents. And I asked him, I said, do you feel richer or poorer today than you did a month and a half ago? And he thought about it for a second. He said, I feel poor. He's like, I've saved more money because I'm more prudent today. I said, well, why do you feel poor? You haven't taken a pay cut. Uh, have you cut expenses? Have you increased spending more? Have you increased expenses? Are you spending more money? He's all, no, I just value money more today than I did, you know, when we were in Las Vegas. And that's probably the same with all of us. And that's something that becomes really important to understand is going to be the value. I don't see a lot of people spending money on cruises. You know, what does a cruise for a family of four cost? 3000 bucks minimum. I mean, unless you go do a super cheap cruise at, you know, a cheap carnival last minute or something. You know, I, I can tell you that, that my wine habits have changed. I can tell you, you know, if I was... I'm not, but if I was still a member of a country club, I wouldn't be anymore. I dropped that in you know, the last <laughs> recession and never went back. But that's the thing that becomes super important here for you guys to understand. What I just said, I dropped my country club membership. Golf had been one of the most important components outside of my family and faith in my entire life. It was my career. It was my dream. It was everything for me. And I quit. And I never went back. The question becomes is what do we learn through this as we as we talked about earlier, getting our company lean? Be very prudent when you go through the reboot that you don't bring things back that you don't need. This is a really important component that we understand how we're going to operate, how we're going to live within our business and personally out of our business moving forward because it's really easy when things feel like they start getting back we start turning a profit that we start adding on it's what i call bloating of business and it kind of ends up bleeding the profitability so stay as lean as you can uh chris right now we increase our <clears throat> email list through facebook groups and increase uh presence there text marketing uh works better than ever so chris i think that's a great Component. I'm gonna put that up there. So this, guys, this is if you see Chris, this is Chris for He's from New York. There's a nice looking picture and his tie and his suit. This is why I see Chris's name. If you don't, if you click on the the link above in the text, you'll see it says Streamyard. Click so I can see your name. Please do that. That way I can see your name so I know who is on the broadcast. Because I'm looking at this uh, not on Facebook, but actually through a Streamyard program. That'd be awesome. This is actually one of the things too that I put in my toolkit. Uh, for my Saturday Sips Lima University members on Saturday, just FYI, this you can go to StreamYard.com uh, and they have a free version of this. Uh, it's a really cool Facebook Live app because I think you should be doing it. But here's what Chris says: one of the most important, one of the most valuable assets that you guys have as a marketing tool right now is your email list because that's the cheapest way to be able to market virtually for free. And Chris is using Facebook groups and stuff to build his email list. If you can put out what we call helpful content to your customers, then you can build your email list. And it's not even just your customers, it's also your prospects. 
uh, through helping them. Um, so a lot of good stuff. Thanks for sharing that, Chris. I appreciate it. So if you guys see up above in the post, if you'll click on that, add your name, then I can see what you guys are commenting. I know who it is. Those of you that are just joining, this is week one of six weeks. I'm going to do this for you guys. This is my 45 day program uh, to basically reboot your company. What should be happening over the next 45 days as the country opens and we get back to some type of new normalcy. I understand it may take 60, it may take 90, but we need to be prepared ahead of time. Um, a lot of you, as I've been talking about this, have said that um, you don't know what to do. So I'm going to walk you through it step by step. If you're just joining in right now, uh, I'm almost done. Then you can go back. This is going to stay right here uh, inside of um, inside of the Limo Growth Group. And, you, and I'll probably tag it with the next 45 days and I'll put them in sequence like I've done with the business plans and other uh, sequences that I've done or series of content uh, that I put together for you. But just to recap, you need to start this week with your goals and your outcome, that desired outcome for you. And most importantly, I want to put my customers. So I've already gone through and talked to a lot of my customers, um, you know, you guys, and asked them what their outcomes are coming out of uh, this. And most of you have just said, I want to survive. That's it. I want to survive. Very few are saying, I want to flourish and I have these goals set and I want to do this and that and the other. Well, if you set your goal as survival, that's great, but that's really probably what you're going to get is you're going to get a business that's going to survive and you won't be flourishing when we come out of this. For me, I want to flourish. I want to be growing. I want to set my goals higher to where if I do come out of it, sorry, to where survival is not even just, it's not even in my mindset. And that's what I'm talking about, about the outcome, the desired the desired goals that you have, they've got to align. And then you got to incrementally put action steps of how and when and who's going to be responsible to achieve each one of those goals. Number two is you need to look at this as a reboot. You get the opportunity to change your business, to go after new customers, to raise your prices, you know, via whatever it is. This You get to determine what your business is going to be like 45 days, 90 days from now. We all have that opportunity. Um, that's the time to buy smallest operators if you can and grow. Um, thing you should do every single week is you need to call your clients. You need to be comfortable with them. They need to be comfortable with you. And a lot of you have asked, well, what do I say? You just call them and say, hey, Charlie, this is Bill. How are you doing? Um, you know, Bill, I'm struggling just like you are. You know, just I don't know when we're going to get out of this. Don't know when we're going to get out of the shelter place. You're going to have the same conversations you do with your friends. And that's so important because if you can't talk to your customers as friends, then you haven't built a strong enough relationship with them. So many people have said, oh, my customers don't want to hear from me. They don't want to hear from their limo company. Well, if they view you as a limo company, then you're doing something wrong. You have to be building the relationships with them. Most of you don't think of Limo University as Limo University. You don't think of it as Chris or Jenny or whoever. You think of it as me. And that's by design. That's on purpose. I want to have relationships with you guys. I'm invested into you. I'm invested into hundreds of people right now that are not my customers. And I've always been that way. Because I believe that if I help them and I can help change their life in a positive way, then eventually on their own accord, they'll decide to come back and buy something from me. So I don't have to sell to them. It's just about creating value and being authentic and wanting to help. That's the conversation, that's the style of conversation you should have with your customers. Four is review and adapt. This is gonna change every week as, as we've seen with like the PPP and the EIDL, things are changing every single day. Thank God Congress is back in session now. Hopefully we'll get some of that stuff ironed out, but I think we're gonna have some clarity over the next week or two, not only in, in the PPP and the EIDL component and those fundings, but I also think we're gonna have some a lot more clarity on the reopening plan and kind of how we're gonna reopen. I shared that with you guys last week, uh, once that was released on Thursday by the White House, but I think we're gonna see a lot more timing uh, that is gonna be become much more clear uh, to us over the next seven to 10 days as well. So we need to make sure that we're ready to review and adapt as well. Um, whoever said surviving is merely existing, thriving is the ultimate goal, 100%, I agree. Um, for that person and whoever's from Rochester uh, that just joined in, please go back up to the text. Just really quickly click on that link uh, to give StreamYard the ability to see your name. That way I can see your name and know who that is because I'd like to say hi to you. And I'm just going to go back to the second page here uh, as well where I have uh, talking about pivoting versus panicking. 
And a lot of you have asked me why I've, why I've done so many startups, why I've done so many businesses in my career. I'm gonna give you two reasons for that. Reason number one is I'm not a big business guy. I believe in uh, small businesses. I love growing businesses. And as I grew um, you know, some of these businesses to 30 million and to $50 million, it's just, it's just not me. I don't wanna be a CEO with a thousand employees. That's not, you know, if you watch billions, I don't wanna be Bobby Axelrod by any means. I like having a small team. I like having a small business. I think I can be more intimate with my team. I, think can, I know I can be more intimate with my customers in that way. I mean, imagine if I had 15,000 customers in Limo University, I couldn't do this type of stuff. I wouldn't have time to be able to do that for you guys. So that's one reason. Number two is I've been through a lot of these downturns in the past and I've had to adapt and I've had to pivot many, many times. And this is something, this is what I call agility. The faster that you can pivot, the faster that you can recognize the need for a pivot, the better off that you're going to be. So the other thing that I think is really important as we talked about with those goals is you've got to set higher goals, but most importantly, that you have to stay positive because po positivity equals possibilities. And if you have possibilities, then what do you have? You can identify and see opportunity, which is really what we should be looking at. The ability to create opportunity and focus on solutions that provides opportunity as opposed to the negative shit that goes on and saying, I can't do this, or my customers won't be traveling, or all those types of things. Put all that negative crap aside and stay positive because that's going to give you an open mindset. And if you have an open mindset, then you're going to be able to identify the possibilities and opportunity. That's where I see that people will flourish and people will go. And if you look at your outcomes and your goals and your negative belly, then one of the things that I would tell you is your personal outcomes and your personal goals is you need to learn to change your mindset and be more positive. Because positivity equals possibilities. I'll be here every mon Monday morning. We're going to go through this week by week. This is a six-week process over the next 45 days. If you guys have any questions, just leave me a comment. And this was valuable. Please hit the like button or tag one of your fellow affiliates so they can see it. Um, if you just hit me up, bill at limogrowth.com, you can PM me, leave a comment down below, but just make sure you do one thing this week. Take action every single day. Grab your future right now by its neck and tell it that you are going to take control and you are going to dominate it. Thank you, everybody. Have a great week. Take action.